Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Pro Audio Loft. I'm Larry, head engineer of Bigfoot Studios, based in Rome. Uh, we're a studio that provides mixing, mastering, and production services. Uh, today I will uh, show you the way I um, utilize a really interesting tool uh, by Waves Factory. It's called Track Spacer. It's a great, beautiful plugin. And um, today I will show you some of my techniques that I use uh, to make the mixes breathe more uh, so that uh, I the way I tackle conflicting frequencies with this plugin is it's really great um, I've been using it more and more throughout my sessions and um, I will show you also an alternative views of this plugin um, that resembles the theory behind book sounds sooth too so you can get actually an alternative to that by uh, utilizing the same reasoning uh, behind the uh, logic inside the uh, Ook uh, Sound Sooth 2 plugin. Um, but let's dive into the session first and I will um, show you a little bit of the uh, of this demo that I just made for the for the tutorial. And uh, so you can have a grasp on the on the vibe of the of the material we'll be uh, uh, working on, and uh, so you can uh, then I will dive into the technicalities behind the use of track spacer within a mixing session. So here we go. All the colors. All the light shining, shining. All the colors, all the light shining, shining. All the colors, all the light shining, shining. All the colors, all the light. Okay, so it's a, sort of a down-tempo funky track. And um, in this case, the way I utilized um, track spacer is really interesting in um, two different uh, uses. I will start off by the vocals. Well, uh, we got our main vocal here, which is... All the colors, all the light. Shining, shining. Okay, and uh, by the time <clears throat> uh, the, the track goes on, some backing vocals come in. All the colors, all the light, shining, shining. So, the way I utilized track spacer in this regard. I use them on the backing vocals in a really classic way. I mean, the 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 way this this plugin was uh, was uh, made for. So basically, what I did is just I just sent a basic side chain feeding the tra the, the track spacer. So this came from my main vocals, and I have them sending them to the bus of the backing vocals which is this instance of track spacer so you will see that when the actual plugin starts to work is because it gets fed by the main vocals so all the colors, all the light. so this uh, enables me to have uh, less conflicting conflicting frequencies and resonances within the same frequency range. In this case, I decided to tackle uh, all the mid range um, so that I don't get any sort of conflicting frequency between the two, and they 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 uh, get along together and they sit better in the mix. Uh, I will 
I mean, these are subtle uh, practices, but I find them really useful when addressing a whole mix because at the end, it's all about working on the little things and uh, that's, uh, that's really important. Uh, now, this is a really easy and, and a small mix, but just an example, but imagine having a big stack of vocals uh, and a lot of guitars and drums and everything. It's important to have a lot of space between instruments so you can actually have a grasp of what's going on in, um, in musical terms and have a better uh, definition of the of each one of the instruments. Um, I will just bypass it for the um, so you can hear what it's doing. All the colors, all the light, shopping, shopping. All the colors, all the light, shopping, shopping. Okay, as you could hear, it's it's it quite it's quite subtle because I haven't said it extremely well. It's it's quite drastic, but in this case, that's um. That's what I wanted to achieve, but um, what you could actually feel is that the were the the backing vocals were really resonant and a bit clashy uh, with the with the main vocal. The track spacers I actually managed to um, make everything sit in its own place without losing the sense of width and uh, the additional feeling that you get when the backing vocals come in and that's a really interesting use and um, I would I will call it a more classic use of, of track spacer um, another use that I really like of this plugin is with the uh, other other instruments in this case I have this uh, drum loop uh, which is basically um, playing the whole Hats and, and there's a clap in it, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's just it's just a normal drum loop that will will play now. There's a lot of uh, high end frequencies going on in the, in the frequency spectrum, and. Um, my main concern was that those frequencies would have clashed with the main vocal and caused a lot of high-end information, which uh, I don't want when the actual vocal is coming in. On one hand, since it's a really, we we'll call it minimal sort of track, since there's a bass, a clap, a drum loop, and vocals, I want the, vo the, the drum loop to feel the... Um, high frequency spectrum in a nice way but at the same time I don't want it to clash with the vocals when they come in so what I did here again same concept behind what I did with the the main vocal and backing vocals is that I uh, sent a sidechain signal from the main vocals to the drum loop track over here, over this track spacer. So it tackles all the frequencies from 1 1.1, yeah, 100, uh, 1150 kilo, uh, hertz and 4.2k. So I covered a lot of the ringing frequencies that I didn't like when the uh, drums were playing. and. Um, I'll bypass it so you can have a listen to it within the mix. All the colors, all the light, shining, shining. All the colors, all the light, shining, shining. All the colors, all the light. Shopping, shopping. 
Okay, sorry for my CPU. Um, so in this case, as you could hear, the, the definition of the vocal comes forward because in that exact moment, the the drum loop is ducking down to make space for the vocal, and this that's really good in terms of mixing because you, you get a lot of more clarity and definition out of the instruments. And also, a nice, really nice feature that I like about track spacer is that you can actually get to um, decide the attack and release times, work in a mass mode, and you can listen to the sidechain frequencies that it's being triggered. Um, again, the reasoning behind this is really similar to the ones that I had for the back and vocals, but a really interesting use of this plugin can be achieved by emulating what Soothe 2 does. Uh, it, it actually is a really valid alternative to the Oak Sound plugin. Guys, it's Oak Sound, don't, don't, <laughs> don't hate me for this, but there's always alternative ways to do the same thing. Of course, uh, that's, that's a bit easier because with Oak Sound, because you just stuff one plugin in and it does it automatically. But the reasoning behind Oak, the Oak Sound's Sooth 2 is that um, you get a, a, a plugin that has an internal sidechain that triggers a, um, a boosting filter of some frequencies. Uh, more specifically, how, how can they achieve this? Basically, I double the drum loop track and I fed it into a second instance of track spacer 2 and um, in order to tackle some of the frequencies it's not over what I put here on the, uh, on the double channel that it's feeding the track spacer it's an EQ with the resonant filter of the frequencies that I want to tackle. And this is exactly what Sooth 2 is doing. Of course, it's a bit uh, a slower process, but it's important sometimes to learn what plugins are doing in terms of process. And that's a, a really important part of, uh, of what we're doing. Um, more importantly, um, the nice thing about this is that you can do it on a full range of frequencies with multiple and even more, I guess, uh, instances of uh, EQ frequencies. Not that you need it every time. I mean, you won't stuff 20 frequencies uh, on the, on the track spacer because that would be basically ruining the whole <laughs> the whole frequency spectrum. But it gets you a little bit more of uh, of options that the Sooth Two one has. Sooth Two is way quicker. I I admit that. Uh, but it's nice sometimes to have alternatives and, and and play with it and see what sounds best. And um, so in this case, this this channel here is triggering this second instance of track spacer. So when you see, when, when, it, when it's playing. All the colors, all the light. It's actually reducing the resonant frequencies out of this frequency spectrum. As you can see from here. And this is exactly what SU2 is doing. The importance of having this EQ here is that it makes sure that those frequencies being boosted are actually tackled more predominantly because all the resonant frequencies will pop up in this triggering channel and they will get reduced more heavily on the second instance of track spacer you have on your own instrument channel. I, in this case, I utilize the linear phase uh, instance of, of FubFilter Pro-Q, so I don't get any phase issues whatsoever. 
So, as an ending, uh, as a conclusion to this video, I suggest you to play with Track Spacer and discover all the features. It's a really, really, really great plugin. I'm, I'm enjoying it so far. And it makes really, um, your mixes, they, it, it's easier to make them breathe. Uh, way easier than it would have been by just stuffing a multiband compressor in a sidechain. Uh, triggered by sidechain. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's basically it. I really thank you for your attention and uh, uh, sorry for my absence in this period, but I was really busy working. And um, please comment in the, the video below. Let me know what you think. Let me know what's your what are your thoughts about this great plugin. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. And I salute you. And uh, a big hug from Italy. Ciao.